Hey, what's up, Reefers? This video is going to be a little bit more interactive. It's not just going to be me talking in front of a tank like usual. Today, we are actually going to visit a fish store, uh, House of Tropicals. That's a local LFS that is quite big. Uh, specifically, I'm going to go there to uh, drop off some corals for Lynn as well. Uh, namely, the Space Invader that I fragged up in the last video. Quick recap. This came in as a large colony of Space Invader from Jim, but he was having a little issue with it. Um, but in my tank, it also started receding. So I fragged it up for about two and a half weeks. It was doing excellent. Uh, it seems to be kind of retaking the skeleton. But earlier this week, it started receding in my tank again. So I, uh, I don't know. I'm gonna dip it, but I'm kind of nervous. So I chatted with them and Lynn's gonna take most of these guys in. I'm probably gonna hold on to one or two to just see if I can still dip them to treat it. I'm really, really curious what's going on. But uh, most likely I'm just gonna keep this one and the other one that seems to be doing well in this environment. The other one, as you can see in the large one I've been keeping track of, that definitely receded again. So something is going on, something is going on. And as reference, this Space Invader uh, frag and that one seems to be doing really well and growing really fast in my tank. So I think the environment should be okay in the tank for Space Invader Pectinia, but something is going on. Same thing with that Pectinia, Rainbow Pectinia there that Jim also dropped off at the same time. As you can see, it's super, super happy and completely adjusted to the tank at this point and just doing well. So we're gonna drop some of these frags off and hope that Lin has a um, better touch than me. Over here, we also have six frags of golden rod. Most of these are pretty fresh cut. Uh, what happens is the Touch of Aquatics TSA uh, actually reached out and asked if I have any golden rod frags because they are looking for some. And when Ernesto mentioned this, I was like, dude, I got you. And I immediately cut them. Um, and I think this is really cool because they have hooked me up with corals in the past. If you look at previous videos and it is awesome that I get a chance to actually send them corals back. And I, I was like, yes, finally. Uh, but I do not ship corals, as you guys know. So I reached out to my friend Lynn uh, from Puddle Aquatics, and she was like, no problem, I can ship them for you. Uh, she was super nice about it. So here are six frags, three of them uh, being shipped out to TSA by Lynn, and I believe TSA is gonna farm them, and uh, they should have them for sale in the future. And three of them are going to Lynn, and I believe she'll also go ahead and try to grow them out and have them for sale on her website as well, which is Puddle Aquatics. She recently partnered up with Todd's, and they have their own uh, fish and coral business as well. So definitely check them out. And of course, I uh, originally got these corals from Joker's Corals, so they should also have some of these uh, golden rod for sale as well if you are uh, looking and you're not based in Maryland. There is still a demand for the golden rod locally. I still owe frags to uh, one or two people at least. Uh, so I will be fragging this in, I think two weeks or so. I feel like that's when the these are probably gonna hit the golf bond side again. But the fact that I'm sending these out is because weather's good. Uh, I find somebody who can help me ship and just so that TSA reach out to me and I really owe them. So I wanna just get these out first. So forgive me for just kind of like bumping them up a little bit and just sending this batch off. but. More should be coming, so I did not forget. I got you. All right, reefers, ICP test time. Uh, as mentioned earlier, we noticed uh, the uh, Space Invader Pectinia started receding a little bit. That got my reach sensei gym a little bit nervous because I was uh, cycling some of the uh, bow media for him, and it was made by Higer for fresh water specifically. But uh, people have been using them for reef tank, it seems to be okay, but somebody did mention that it may contain some aluminum. Out of an abundance of caution, my reef sensei Jim told me to just go ahead and pull those media and we have the media cycling in a bucket instead. And I'm gonna ICP the tank just to see if anything actually did leach into the tank from using those uh, bio media. And he's also gonna ICP the uh, bucket water as well, just to double check. And he also really wanna know if these media actually does leach any kind of metal or stuff into the water as some people may have clinked. So we'll take a look, I'll keep you guys updated. Uh, but for now, all the Space Invader Pectinia are safely with Lynn. Hopefully she can uh, uh, turn them around but because in my tank, they were going down here really, really quickly. Two weeks later. What's up, Reefers? Welcome to my computer room. Over here, we have my plants. First of all, we got the mangrove, which we'll talk about in the future. We got the pothos doing really well. We got the Thai constellation, Monsteras, and we got my wife over there sneaking in trying to see what's going on because I have not vlogged in so long. What is wrong with her? And there's my dog attacking my wife. Welcome to my house. There is the uh, Thai constellation. 
There, there she is again. Uh, good job giving birth to Nina. Much appreciate. Look, okay, never mind. And here's the Queen and Three I can't, I can't speak. The Queen and Three And here's the McDowey that is doing really well. I know I'm butchering all the name, man. But uh, look at these guys. I think you guys snuck a peek of it maybe a couple months back, and these guys all grew really, really large. Anyways, we'll talk about plants in the future but today uh, we want to focus on the ICP test results. In the last video we saw that Jim gave me a box of Hyger's, I think that's how it's pronounced, Hyger? 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 I think it's Hyger. Hyger Biomedia to cycle. Um, he wanted to seed the Biomedia so he can use it in his new tank build which is super exciting. Now seeing this somebody commented that uh, these type of media may leach aluminum um, but then there's kind of a point there are people saying that oh we, they've used these kind of about media with success in their reef tank as well. So that kind of freaked Jim out a little bit because it is not his tank. Is he, he is like, oh, I don't want to mess with it. Uh, for me personally, I'm not, I was like, oh, it's okay. I do regular ICP tests. It's not a huge deal. So what he ended up doing is giving me um, uh, ICP, ATI ICP pack for me to send in for my tank. And then he asked me to pull most of the bow media out in a bucket to cycle that way. So it's a little bit safer in case something is going on. So here's the results. So looking once again at the computer screen. We slide down here. We're gonna we're not gonna focus too much on these guys. I'm gonna plug these into the Reef Mushiner uh, spreadsheet to know what my uh, adjustment dose is. But today our focus is on uh, pollutants. Aluminum specifically. So aluminum right now is sitting at 17 which um, according to ATI is not really elevated. It's within reason. So no problem over here. However, if we look back to the previous measurements of aluminum, it was six. So I was like, okay, maybe something else is going on. Let's, maybe, it's a, maybe it is a parameter that kind of jumps around a little bit. So I checked another three months in advance, it was five. And then I go even further and it's same kind of deal nine so it doesn't really it stays around there it's not like a big deviation so 17 is kind of here's 8.9 so the 17 is kind of like the outlier and the only thing i can really think of that happened was um i broke part of rock uh to kind of frag some of the zoas um i broke apart the space invader pectinia and and then it's cycling the media so in my mind i feel like it's potential it is plausible that the media may be leaching something and I think um, down the road Jim is gonna experiment with the uh, cycled buckets of the bio media and I think uh, his plan may be to send in another ICP test for just that bucket to see what the aluminum uh, measurement is in that bucket again it's not a big deal because right now the even though the aluminum uh, level is up it is not Oh my gosh, I got to get them out right away. But like you saw in early in the video, because I did not know how much aluminum was potentially going to the tank, I went ahead and ran uh, Copasorb and um, Polyfilters as well as Pirates. And I'm sure uh, by now the aluminum level is much lower than when I sent the ICP test, which is before I ran um, these uh, filter. So that is that. Um, Hydras. <laughs> I don't want to make this conclusive because it's not, but in my particular case, it seems like it is because something is getting in the water potentially from these bound media. But again, uh, I guess uh, if Jim decided to run a little bit more tests on this uh, really nice affordable bound media, then he will probably share the result with us. Um, otherwise, I'm probably not going to put those back into the tank just in case that is what is leaching aluminum into the tank, even though right now is not of concern, but who knows what happens if I put them in there long term with uh, and in a larger number. Much appreciated to the viewer that left a comment about potentially leaching aluminum from this particular about media. And of course, thank you, Jim, for hooking me up with that ICP test. Again, all is well, and we'll see what happens in the future if Jim did, does decide to kind of pursue and test a little bit more of these uh, about media. With that said, let's get on with the show. Oh, so the big question is, did the raised aluminum level affect the corals? Honestly, it's really hard to say. I mean, the space invader pectinia was receding a little bit, and the two frags that I have left behind started recovering. Um, <laughs> it seems like a coincidence, but after I started putting the uh, 
um, the metal absorbent into the, um, the mechanical filtration, I feel like they kind of stop receding and it seems to be gaining ground again in terms of tissue growth. But again, it could be a lot of things because my tank this nitrate was really low as well. So it could be that as well. It could just be the lack of nutrient for the corals. So it's really hard to kind of pinpoint everything to one thing, especially when the aluminum, even though it's elevated, is still within reason. It's not at the caution level yet. So I'm not sure if that's it. It could be a lot of things or a combination of things, hard to say. So I can't, I don't want to be conclusive here. I just want to show you that, yes, this biomedia most likely leads a little something something in the tank and that's pretty much it. Just take it as that. I will be damned. Look what I woke up to. No more Aptasia. Well, there's still one and two right here, but there used to be a field of Aptasia. Is this overnight? It's all gone. All gone. I, I see remnants, right? But if you look back to earlier in the video, it's just a field of them. And I double check over here. Sure enough, these are gone as well. This is overnight. Again, yesterday I was just looking at the tank and like, man, uh, we need to address the Aptasia in some other way somehow. And just like that, overnight, I guess the uh, Aptasia eating filefish is living up to his name. Uh, I'm just gonna wait for it to kind of polish off the remaining ones and then I got to be vigilant to make sure this little fella does not start picking at corals as well. It took about, I have him for what, two months at this point? Month and a half, two months. Time is passing at a different rate these times when I have uh, two kids. But I think I have him for about a month or a month and a half. And it took that amount of time to start picking off the Aptasias, recognizing it as food. Oh, good job. This is one of the best gifts heading into the weekend. But again, now I gotta watch out, make sure it does not pick on uh, corals that I wanna make sure it does not pick on, so, yes. All right, here's a little treat. We see the circus go be getting a little bit bolder. You'll see it right there. That's one. The second one, right there. So they're getting bolder and bolder by the day, and I noticed that once there are two of them, they seem to be out a little bit more. So I'm hoping that you see how the one in the back is starting to come to the side and almost to the top of the rock work? I'm hoping that they'll get bold enough to actually perch on the top of the rock instead of just kind of hiding on the, on the side. But then, again, the name is called Upside Down Gobi, so maybe the preference is hiding upside down on the rock work, like this guy right here. But it's just really cool to actually see them, uh, at least during feeding time, pretty consistent now, so that's awesome. And of course, here are all the other little picklets during feeding time, all over the tank. One week later. All right, Neon yeah, checking out the fish. There you go. I got it. There you go. All right, let's see. All right, so this update kind of covers the last three or four weeks of what has been happening with this tank. It's not as stable as I would like. Um, however, the coral so far seems okay, except for the Space Invader Pectinia, which also turned out to be okay because the receding has stopped. As noted here, here's one frag, and here's the other one. This one, this one is doing especially well. It's almost completely healed up. The other thing is the soft coral that Lynn got me last month, a month and a half. It's growing really well inside the cage, but it has not attached the diffract plug yet. That's why it's still in the cage. So we'll we'll keep it there indefinitely, uh, and we'll see how it does. And in the meantime, I have been actively pulling out all the firework cloves. That's those orange clove coral from the main rock structure, because they're just growing so fast. But a good thing is that the uh, clove corals, at least this particular type, as well as the rainbow clove, are pretty easy to plug off. Uh, once you pull one out, they, there's like a connections. There's a stem that connect different ones and usually you just pull out a chunk as well. So that's fantastic. However, they are fast grower because I see and we got some here as well. And also some there as well. Now in a moment, I am working on a um, video of my top seven favorite mushrooms of all time. And I've been digging into the history behind each of these strands. I'm still waiting for uh, to hear back from one or two people. And once that's done, I'm gonna compile them all together. In fact, they're pretty much all compiled except for one or two. And then I'm gonna release that video. I think that video is really interesting. I learned a lot of like where these mushrooms came from and a little bit about the care while doing the research is fantastic and can't wait to show you guys. Look at all these fish. They're all hungry and they're waiting. So back to the tank update. For the most part, the, ta the tank is doing well. Corals are doing well. I do notice 
odd things. For example, if we look really carefully in the back, we'll see that the Master Yoda SPS, that's a green one on the left hand side to the right, that little portion bleached out and it's the strangest thing. And my suspicion is the Colorado Sunburst Anatomy which moved from down here all the way up here. What are you doing? What's that? Spongebob stickers? Where'd you get from? Where'd you get that from? From there? Oh, this one? Okay, uh, let me help you in a little bit, okay? So the Colorado Sunburst Anatomy moved from down here and went up there and I think it torched a lot of corals along the way even though it's kind of on the back wall. So I'm hoping that the receding is going to stop for the Master Yoda. If not, I may need to pull a frag just to kind of preserve it, make sure I have something on hand. And the file fish, like I mentioned, is doing a fantastic job keeping the Aptasias at bay. But at some point I will need to um, move the file fish to the refugium or kind of to a local hobbyist uh, tank who has Aptasia issue as well. Because I, I do hear that the uh, file fish, once they're done with the Aptasias, they may move on to uh, meteor cor corals. So we'll see how that goes. There are some other corals that I did not talk about. For example, the elegance coral. <laughs> Neon keeps calling the foul fish the butterfly fish, but it's actually the Aptasia eating foul, f foul fish. That's his fish. That's why he's uh, so attached to it. Like my best life. I don't know. It's back there somewhere. It's always hiding. It's always hiding. You gotta go find it. Okay, go look. And this elegance coral is actually a um, natural. It's not. It's not a split. It's, it's more like a scorn, drop. Scorn, scorn. The original, big one, yeah, the, big. the original model colony of big the one. elegance is with Jim. That's big now. And that's it naturally big. dropped no, a collar. You found it. You found it? Yeah. Oh, there it is. That's big now. That is called a Aptasia filefish. That's big one. That's big one. That is. Can you say it? Aptasia eating filefish, Neon? Eating fish. Close enough. Good job. So this is Elegance Coral Baby. It's really put on some size. I really like that spot right there, but I do need to shovel things around a little bit soon what's before things are that? That's a big snail. That's a Mexican what's turbo that? snail. Can you say it? No, Mexican Mex Mexican Mex turbo no. snail. No. There you go. Yeah, but uh, the other thing I'm really happy about is the Wicking Willow has really put on some size That's and growth. Nemo. That's, That's excellent. That's Nemo. Yeah. And a lot of these SPS are actually growing really well. For example, the um, Something something bear. <laughs> Teddy the bear. No, I don't know. I forget what it's called, but next to the goth bond size, growing well. The fruity pebble is finally putting out all these branches at the top. Uh, there's a lot of little updates why like this no all along the tank. Daddy, why is this not moving? It's oh it's sleeping. It's not actively eating. I think it's just resting right now. But anyways, I am on daddy duty right now, so I guess I'm gonna cap off this video right here. And by the time you're watching this, we may actually be in Orlando, Florida again. Now this time around, daddy, what's that? What's not eating this? Yeah, it's not eating the algae. It's sleeping. It's resting. Yeah, snails need to rest. Yeah, so like I was saying, I may not have. I'm not sure if I have time to visit LFS this trip. I'll try to. And um. I'm gonna try to bring something a little different if I do have the chance to visit uh, one of the fish stores down in Orlando, Florida. They have amazing stores down there like TSA, uh, Worldwide Corals, and Living Reefs, a lot of stores. So hopefully I'll bring something new. Regardless, I uh, hope you guys have a fantastic week. Uh, and I guess I'll see you next video, whenever that's gonna be. Um, you wanna say bye? You wanna say bye-bye? Bye-bye. Okay, see you next time.